In these great U.S. states, we have 50 capital cities for each of those states. Though the state capital is the seat of government for a given state, it is not necessarily the largest city in some cases. Sometimes it might not even be the second largest city. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the states in which the capital city is not the largest and where it stands relative to the other cities in its state. I'll be using the official 2020 census population numbers for the purpose of this video. This is also a rare case where I'll be referencing city populations for the most part to make these comparisons for the purpose of consistency. Hit that like button, subscribe if you love it, and let's talk about some state capitals. We're going to alphabetical order, so the first on the list is Alabama. In Alabama, the state capital is Montgomery, while its largest city is Huntsville. Birmingham, the former largest city in the state, is also larger than Montgomery. In 2020, Montgomery had a population of 200,603 people, while Birmingham just barely edged it out at 200,733. Huntsville took the top spot in the state with 215,006. Montgomery became the capital in 1861 when it was moved from Tuscaloosa to reflect the shift in power towards the south central part of the state due to the dominance of King Cotton at that time. Though Huntsville has caught and surpassed Birmingham in population, Birmingham's metro area remains more than twice the size of Huntsville's. So it is safe to say that Birmingham is still the most dominant city by far in Alabama. The next state on this list is Alaska. In Alaska, the state capital is Juneau, while its largest city is Anchorage. Juneau is the third largest city in Alaska with a 2020 population of 32,255. It trails second place Fairbanks, which was slightly ahead at 32,515. And in first place, Anchorage, which completely dominates with 291,247 people. Juneau has a massive land area, the second largest of any city in the United States only behind its fellow Alaska city of Sitka. Juneau became the capital in 1906 when the U.S. Congress decided to move it there from Sitka. Juneau is unique in that it is the only mainland capital not actually connected to the mainland by road. There have been occasional talks of moving the capital from Juneau, but so far nothing has been able to stick. Next up is a big one that you all know very well, California. In California, the state capital is Sacramento in the northern part of the state. In terms of city population, it comes in sixth, outmatched by five other cities in the state. In 2020, Sacramento had a population of 524,943. Fifth place Fresno came in at 542,107. Fourth place San Francisco had 873,965. And third place was San Jose with 1,013,240. Then San Diego took the second place spot with 1,386,932. And Los Angeles, the largest city in California and second largest in the country came in at 3,898,747. Monterey was the capital of California when it was part of Mexico, but after statehood, San Jose, Vallejo, Venecia, and finally Sacramento ended up being the location for the permanent capital. California is primarily dominated by the Los Angeles and San Francisco Bay Area metros. Sacramento rarely pops into anyone's mind when California is mentioned. Next, we have Connecticut, where the state capital is Hartford, but the largest city is Bridgeport. In 2020, Hartford had a population of 121,054, while Bridgeport had 148,654. Fellow Connecticut cities of Stanford and New Haven also outrank Hartford, with Stanford having a population of 135,470, and New Haven bringing in 134,023. Interesting thing of note about these Connecticut cities is that other than Stanford, all have declined from their peak populations in the 1950s, and the title of the largest has changed on occasion through the years. In which case, I can't really say one city dominates the state over the others. If anything, the state as a whole is dominated by New York. Also of note is that Stanford is a part of the New York City metro area, perhaps capturing some of the wealthy people of that area looking for a slightly slower pace. Up next is America's first state, Delaware. In Delaware, the state capital is Dover, while its largest city is Wilmington. Delaware is a tiny state overall with 989,948 people as of the 2020 census, and no cities breaking the 100,000 mark. Wilmington had a population of 70,898, while Dover came in at 39,403. Wilmington is down from a peak population in the mid-20th century of around 120,000, while Dover has been posting steady growth during the same time frame. Even still, it might be a while for it to catch up, but for now, Wilmington is the dominant city for the state of Delaware. 
which even Wilmington itself is a part of the Philadelphia metropolitan area. The next state is quite the interesting case, and that is Florida. In Florida, the state capital is Tallahassee, while the largest city by population is Jacksonville. Tallahassee is greatly outmatched in its state, coming all the way in at 8th place. Port St. Lucie was 7th at 204,851. Hialeah was 6th with 223,109. St. Petersburg was 5th, 258,308. Orlando ranked 4th with 307,573. Tampa in 3rd with 384,959. Miami in 2nd place with 442,241. And Jacksonville had 949,611 people. Florida is a tricky one, as despite Jacksonville having the largest city population due to merging with its surrounding county, the state's most dominant city by far is Miami, and it's not even close. The metro populations here paint a more clear picture of the situation. Tallahassee is the capital of Florida, as this was the portion of Florida that was more developed during its territorial period and early years as a state. The development of Central and South Florida came much later. Our next state is Illinois, and you already know the case here. Chicago is king, and as goes Chicago, so goes Illinois. The state capital? Oh, it's this little place further south in the state called Springfield. Springfield sits at seventh place when it comes to Illinois City. All six of the cities ahead of it are in the Chicago metro area, except for fifth place Rockford. The order goes Springfield at seventh with 113,150, Elgin in sixth with 114,797. Rockford in 5th place with 148,655. Naperville in 4th, a town one of my subscribers referred to as Yuppieville, had 149,540. Joliet with 150,362 ranked 3rd. Aurora in 2nd with 180,542. And finally Chicago proper with 2,746,388 people. Despite Chicago completely dominating the state, Springfield's central location as well as a bit of influence from one Abraham Lincoln made it the choice to become the state capital. Perhaps this helps prevent the influence of Chicago from completely overshadowing the rest of the state. Next we go all the way out to the heart of America where we have Kansas and Topeka. Topeka is the capital of Kansas but the fifth largest city in the state. It had a 2020 population of 126,587. Its fourth largest city is Olathe, suburb of Kansas City, with 141,290 people. Kansas City, also a suburb of Kansas City, Missouri, is third, with 156,607. Overland Park, yet another Kansas City suburb, is second, with 197,238. And in first place is Wichita, with 397,532 people. One thing of note is that Topeka is the only one of these cities that is losing population. I visited the area back in July and you can definitely feel the stagnation as you cruise around the city. Nearby Lawrence might catch up if they're not careful. Not far away we have the state of Kentucky where the largest city is Louisville and the state capital is this sleepy small town called Frankfurt. Frankfurt is completely dominated by other cities in its state and ranks far down the list at 13th place with only 28,602 people. It is one of the smallest state capitals in the country. This list of cities ahead of it is so long that I'll just give you the top five in this state. In fifth place was Covington with 40,961. Fourth place was Owensboro with 60,183. Bowling Green in third place with 72,294. Lexington was second with 322,570. And Louisville had a 2020 population of 633,045. Frankfurt won a bid against several towns in 1792 by offering the most money and other valuables to win the title of state capital. Louisville's location as a border town on what was at the time hostile territory made it a non-starter for consideration as the state capital. Down to Louisiana is our next state and you already know the deal here. New Orleans is king, but Baton Rouge is the capital. While New Orleans is greatly diminished from its 1960s high of over 600,000 residents, it still takes the top spot in the state with 383,997 people in 2020. A slight rebound from some of the population lost in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina reflected on the 2010 census. 
The capital of Baton Rouge, with this more centralized location in the state, had a 2020 population of 227,470. Baton Rouge has hovered around this same population for the past 40 years, so it's unlikely that it will be challenging New Orleans anytime soon. Now we go from way down south to the far north to the state of Maine. In Maine, the state capital is Augusta, while Portland is its largest city. Augusta is another state capital that is far outmatched by many cities in its state. It ranks as the 12th largest city in Maine and the third smallest state capital in the U.S. with only 18,899 people. So we'll look at the top five cities in the state. In fifth place is Auburn with 24,061 people. Fourth place was South Portland with 26,498 people. Bangor was in third with 31,753. Lewiston in second place had 37,121. And Portland far and away in first place at 68,408. As you can see, Maine mostly consists of small towns, and as such, Portland is easily the most dominant city in this state. Maine as a whole is a very slow but steady growth state. I enjoyed my visit there last December, but definitely hope to make it out there during the warmer months at some point. Right after Maine is Maryland, whose well-known largest city is Baltimore. The state capital is this little town on the coast called Annapolis. In Maryland, there's no better way to display dominance than the fact that Annapolis is a part of the Baltimore metropolitan area. Maryland is an interesting case as it contains a large amount of places that aren't actually incorporated as cities. So if we include these types of places, then Annapolis ranks all the way down at 26th with this population of 40,648. But if limited only to incorporated cities, Annapolis would rank seventh largest in the state. So we'll take a look at the top five and include these unincorporated places. In fifth place was Frederick with 82,175. Fourth place, Silver Spring had 82,472. Third place, Germantown had 90,235 people. Second place, Columbia has 105,086. And the number one spot, of course, belongs to Baltimore, which had 569,931 people, which in itself is a huge loss from its 1950 high of around 950,000 residents. At the Maryland is Michigan, of course, where we have the case of Detroit and Lansing. Lansing is another state capital that has several cities ahead of it in its state. It had a 2020 population of 112,654, which made it sixth in the state. Ann Arbor was fifth with 123,851. Sterling Heights was fourth at 134,346. Warren in third with 139,387. Grand Rapids in second place with 198,917. And the top city of Detroit has 639,111 people. A legendary loss of almost two thirds of its peak population of 1.85 million in 1950. It is still declining in population today, but I don't see it falling enough to where it would be in danger of losing its spot anytime soon. Next, we have one of my favorite Midwestern states, and that is Minnesota. The case here in Minnesota is interesting in that the state capital is St. Paul, the second largest city, but it shares its metro and a twin city designation with the larger Minneapolis, which sits next to it. Minneapolis had a 2020 population of 425,336, and St. Paul had 307,193. Minneapolis is and has always been the more dominant of the two cities, containing the larger central business district, more of the area's corporate headquarters, and a little more of the entertainment and things to do in the area. The metro as a whole is growing at a decent rate, but these two cities have been pretty up and down in terms of population growth since the 1950s with Minneapolis down almost 100,000 residents since that time, and St. Paul roughly at the same population it had back then. With that being said, you can still find some of those friendly Minnesota nice folks all over the state. After Minnesota, we have Missouri. In Missouri, the largest city is Kansas City, home of the most recent Super Bowl champions. While the state capital is this obscure place you've never heard of called Jefferson City, in 2020, Jefferson City had a population of 43,228, making it the 15th largest in the state. The fifth largest in the state was Independence with 123,011 people, and fourth place was Columbia with 126,254. 
Third place was Springfield with 169,176. Second place, St. Louis had 301,578 people, a massive decline from its peak population in 1950 of over 850,000. And first place, Kansas City had 508,090 people, a spot that it has held for quite some time due to the decline of the formerly dominant St. Louis. Kansas City weathered its own decline in the late 20th century and has now posted positive growth for the past three U.S. Census. Jefferson City was chosen as the state capital due to its central location midway between Kansas City and St. Louis, despite St. Louis being a territorial capital prior to statehood. Jefferson City was originally proposed to be called Missouriopolis. Next up is Montana. In Montana, the largest city is Billings, while its capital is Helena. Montana is one of the least populated states and doesn't have any truly large cities, but Helena is another case where several cities in the state outrank it. Helena had a 2020 population of 32,091, good for sixth in the state. In fifth place was Butte with 34,494. Fourth place Bozeman had 53,293. Third place Great Falls had 60,442. Missoula came in in second with 73,489. And number one Billings broke the 100,000 mark with 117,116 people. Now we head over to Nebraska, where we have the capital city of Lincoln and the largest city of Omaha. Nebraska is a state where these two top cities are far and away the largest two in the state. The dominant largest city, Omaha, had a population of 466,893 in 2020, while the capital city of Lincoln had 284,736. When I visited Omaha earlier this year, I was somewhat surprised by the size of the city itself and its downtown area. Definitely not what I expected when Nebraska came to mind. I'll just say it was larger than anticipated. While Lincoln also had a lot going on. It is a college town dominated by the University of Nebraska, which is located near the downtown of the city. In Nevada, we have Las Vegas and the tiny capital city, Carson City. Nevada is an interesting state, mostly barren, with the federal government owning the vast majority of the territory in this state. The population is mostly concentrated in the Las Vegas area and the smaller Reno area in the northern part of the state. Carson City was the sixth largest city in the state with a 2020 population of 58,639 people. In fifth place was Sparks at 108,445. Fourth place was North Las Vegas at 262,527. Third place Reno had 264,165. Second place Henderson, a suburb of Las Vegas, had 317,610. And number one Las Vegas has 641,903. Carson City is included in the Reno Sparks combined statistical area. And all five of the cities above it are either in the Las Vegas or Reno metro areas, making Carson City a capital city that is completely dominated by other cities in its state. The next state was one that I had the pleasure of visiting last winter, and that is New Hampshire. The state capital of New Hampshire is Concord, while Manchester is its largest city. In 2020, Concord had a population of 43,976, good for third largest in the state. Second place, Nashua had 91,322, and Manchester had a population of 115,644. I found Concord to be a small, quiet, and sleepy town when I visited, so it is clearly dominated by Manchester, and also Nashua, which both lie in Hillsborough County, while those two cities themselves are somewhat dominated by the much larger Boston to the south, a city of which they help make up the combined statistical area of. This next state is perhaps my favorite northeastern state, and that is New Jersey. Be sure to check out my New Jersey video linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet. New Jersey is a unique case on this list. The largest city is Newark, while the state capital is Trenton. Trenton is the 10th largest city in the state with a population of 90,871, which was an increase from 2010, the first time the city has gained population after losing it for six straight decades. The fifth largest city was Lakewood Township at 135,158, Fourth place, Elizabeth had 137,298. Patterson in third with 159,732. Jersey City with 292,449 was in second. And the top spot of Newark had 311,549. Newark has long been the state's largest city, but Jersey City has been inching closer and closer over the years. 
New Jersey is an interesting case in that none of its cities actually dominate the state. Instead, the majority of the state is dominated by the massive cities on its border. Most of the northern half of the state and most of the state's population lives in the New York City metropolitan area, while the southern part of the state is centered around Philadelphia. And then there is New Mexico and the cities of Santa Fe and Albuquerque. Santa Fe was the fourth largest city in the state in 2020 with a population of 83,776. The third largest city was Rio Rancho with 96,159. Second place Las Cruces had 101,712. And in New Mexico, Albuquerque does indeed dominate the state with a population of 558,545. In fact, I'd argue that in the case of New Mexico, Albuquerque is actually in a more strategic, centralized location, closer to the center of the state than the capital city of Santa Fe. Santa Fe, however, was the capital of the area since it was established by the Spanish in 1610 and has remained the capital ever since, through Spanish, Mexican, and eventual U.S. control, making it the oldest state capital in the United States. This next one is the one you've all been waiting for and perhaps the first one that popped into your head when you clicked on the video. New York. There is no surprise here. New York City not only completely dominates the state of New York, but is also the most dominant city in the entire United States, perhaps even the entire world. The center of the Northeast megalopolis, the financial, cultural, media, and corporate capital of the United States. Far and away the largest city by population, the largest metropolitan statistical area, the largest combined statistical area in the country, and any other metric you want to use. It has held this spot since 1790 and probably won't be giving it up any time in this lifetime. In 2020, New York City had a population of 8,804,190 people. Its metro area extends into four neighboring states and it claims the majority of nearby New Jersey and Connecticut's population as a part of it. As increasing amounts of people commute into the area from Pennsylvania's Poconos and Lehigh Valley areas, don't be surprised if those counties are soon absorbed into its combined statistical area. It is so dominant in the state of New York that the rest of the state has to be referred to as New York State or the upstate as most people think of the city before the rest of the state by default. Oh yeah, and then there is Albany, the state capital. In 2020, it had a population of 99,224, making it the sixth largest in the state. This next one is my home state of North Carolina and in North Carolina, the state capital is Raleigh but its largest city is Charlotte. In 2020, Raleigh had a population of 476,587, making it the state's second largest city, while Charlotte had 897,720 people. Charlotte has long been the state's largest city, but Raleigh has been on a tear in recent decades, quickly overtaking Greensboro and going from a small capital city to a city of significant size in its own right. It is to the point now where you can find a little back and forth in some corners of social media of people comparing Raleigh and Charlotte, similar to how people compare Houston and the Dallas-Fort Worth areas. Combined statistical area is probably the best for comparing these two places as it brings Durham and Chapel Hill back into the fold with Raleigh after they were separated from its metro area in 2000. But even with that, the Raleigh-Durham area had around 2.2 million, while Charlotte had around 3.2 million, and their growth rates are similar. So it looks like Charlotte will continue to remain North Carolina's dominant city for the time being. Sorry, Raleigh folks. Next up is North Dakota, where we have Bismarck and Fargo. North Dakota is another one and two case where the capital is the second largest city with Bismarck having a 2020 population of 73,622. Fargo, on the other hand, had 125,990 people. Bismarck was designated as the capital of the combined Dakota Territory in 1883. But when the territory was split, there was talk of moving the capital to Jamestown. Apparently, some folks in Bismarck raided Jamestown for state records and prevented that move from Bismarck. And so here we are today. Bismarck remains the capital. Up next is Oregon. Now, when you think Oregon, you probably think Portland. But the capital is actually this town you've never heard of called Salem. A clear case where a non-capital city dominates the state. In 2020, Salem had a population of 175,535. But with Portland being so much larger, with its 2020 population of 652,503, it is no wonder that few people have heard of Salem. Salem is the third largest city in the state, slightly losing out to second place Eugene, which had 176,654 people. Next up is Pennsylvania, and most of you already know the deal here. Philadelphia is the clear top city and metro area followed by Pittsburgh on the western side of the state. 
The capital of Harrisburg ranks far down the list in terms of that state's largest cities, all the way down at 15th with a population of 50,099. It is another case of a city that peaked in the mid 20th century with a 1950 population of 89,544. The fifth largest city in the state was Erie with 94,831. Fourth place was Reading with 95,112. Third place Allentown had 125,845 people. Second place Pittsburgh came in with 302,971. And the number one Philadelphia had 1,603,797 people in 2020. Interesting of note with Pennsylvania is that all of its top five cities, with the exception of Allentown, peaked in the 1950s and have not rebounded to those population levels here 70 years later. Now we go to the other Dakota, South Dakota. Some say it is the best Dakota. In South Dakota, the largest city is Sioux Falls, with a 2020 population of 192,517. The state capital of Pierre is the ninth largest in the state and second smallest state capital in the country with a population of only 14,091 people. Pierre is so tiny and so isolated that it does not even have access to the interstate highway system. One of only four state capitals without any blue shields in its boundaries. Other top cities in the state are fourth place Brookings with 23,377 people. Third place Aberdeen had 28,495. And second place Rapid City has 74,703 people. In the case of Pierre, it was chosen as the capital due to its central location, but it became very isolated after World War II due to it being left off of the interstate highway system. The next state on the list is none other than Texas, the Lone Star State, where everything is bigger, except the state capital that is. The state capital city of Austin is the fourth largest in the state by both city population and metro area. In 2020, it had a population of 961,855. Third place, Dallas, had a population of 1,304,379. Second place, San Antonio, had 1,434,625. And first place, Houston, clocked in at 2,304,580 people. In Texas, the Houston and Dallas-Fort Worth metros are clearly the most dominant areas in the state, by far. San Antonio is slightly larger than Austin, but at the current rate of growth, don't be surprised if these areas eventually merge into a single metro area. In a sense, Austin is a good choice as a capital, preventing either Houston or Dallas from having complete dominance over the state. Folks from Texas will tell you that Austin is the least Texas of the Texas cities. I'm inclined to agree, particularly when it comes to its lacking transportation infrastructure. Up next is the tiny state of Vermont. The state capital of Montpelier is the smallest state capital in the country with only 8,074 people in 2020. The largest city of Burlington had 44,743 people in 2020, which makes Burlington the smallest, largest city in any state. Other cities larger than Montpelier include Barr with 8,491 people. Fourth place Essex Junction had 10,590 people. Third place Rutland had 15,807 and second place South Burlington had 20,292 people. And then there is the case of Virginia. Thanks to Virginia's bizarre independent city system, you have a case where Richmond, the state capital, is fourth place with a population of 226,610. And Virginia Beach, which functions mostly as a giant suburb, is technically the largest city with a population of 459,470. The second and third largest cities share the same metro area with Virginia Beach called Hampton Roads, with third place Norfolk having 238,005 people and second place Chesapeake having 249,422 people. The interesting thing about Virginia is that none of these cities actually have any sort of dominance in the state. Instead, the state is completely dominated by the mostly unincorporated suburbs of Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia. At well over 3 million people, it is the size of both the Richmond and Hampton Roads metro areas combined. It exerts its political will on the state as well, since it is home to some of the wealthiest and most powerful people in America. The next to last state is the other West Coast state of Washington. Now that I think about it, the capital is not the largest city in any of the West Coast states. In Washington, the largest city is Seattle, while its capital is Olympia. Washington is another state where the capital city is completely dominated by another city. Seattle's metro area contains more than half of the entire state's population. Washington also has one of the widest population gulfs between the largest city and the capital. 
with Seattle having a population of 737,015 and Olympia having only 55,605 people. Other cities making up the top five in Washington are Bellevue in 5th with 151,854, Vancouver in 4th with 190,915, Tacoma in 3rd with 219,346, and second place Spokane having 228,989 people. And the final state on the list is one that I visited recently and that is Wisconsin. Wisconsin is another case of the capital being the second largest city and another place being the largest. Here the largest city is Milwaukee with 577,222 people in 2020, while the capital of Madison had 269,840 people. Milwaukee is clearly the dominant city here, being ahead of Madison by quite a bit and home to most of the state's big city amenities and its professional basketball team. Interesting thing of note, however, is that Milwaukee has been in population decline since 1960, while Madison has posted consistent growth through this time. Though there's still quite a gulf between them, if current trends continue, Milwaukee's dominance could begin to fade in the state. Make sure to go grab yourself some of those cheese curds when you visit. And there it is, folks, the states where the capital is not the largest, most dominant city. Were you surprised by any of the states on this list? Do you think any of these state capitals have a chance at catching up and becoming the most dominant city in their respective state. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one coming soon to a town near you.